This is a Cult Faction special bonus episode looking at the life and career of Erlen van der Leef de Jude. Ah, <laughs> uh, Superman. Down in the valley, the valley so low. Hang your head over. Hear the wind blow. Hear the wind Hello and welcome to the Collection bonus episode looking at the life and career of Erlen van Leef de Jude, who was a huge man who stood six foot six and weighed 340 pounds. And uh, you may not recognize the name, but you will definitely recognize the face of the man who stared down the Wanderers and also stared down the running man himself, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm joined today by Damien Hicks and also Paul Hawkins, who's currently distracted by pouring himself another drink. I was on mute. I deliberately <laughs> went on mute because I didn't want to get accused of making some noise. You have to say your name. Yeah, I know, but I, mean, I had my hands full. He did, to be fair. He was panicking. I could see the entire terror on his face. <laughs> <laughs> So why Erland, he say? Well, this man, it was a multi-talented man that we're going to look at today. And he is one of those actors that people often wonder what happened to him. He's often searched. Um, you know, he's one of our biggest hits to our, the, the cultfaction.com website is all about him. And we get questions about him all the time. And we figured that on what would be his 68th birthday today, we would do a special episode dedicated to him that goes back over his life and career can i just interject at this point and say from this point onwards he will only be referred to as erland erland yes the, the surname is, is far too difficult for me to pronounce you've clearly struggled at the start paul <laughs> fair play for not even attempting it so i think from now on it's just erland we all know who we're talking about yeah. so cool <laughs> So Erland was born on the 3rd of June 1953 in Hilversum, Holland, and in 1958 his family moved to the United States of America where they settled in New Jersey. In the 60s they relocated to Stamford, Connecticut, and he ended up by the 70s was in Mount Vernon in New Hampshire. Now this is a man, as I say, six foot six, 340 pounds, a big scary looking dude really to, to look at. But he ends up studying computer science at MIT, where he graduates with a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science and Electrical Engineering. He also distinguished himself on the wrestling team, becoming the East Coast champion and was also in loads of stage productions. So he's doing funny. So he's doing things like a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. He's on the wrestling team winning championships, whilst at the same time earning a Bachelor of Science in Computer Sciences and Electrical Engineering. So he's kind of the, the world's toughest nerd, really, in some ways, would you say? That's, that's, that's quite a mixture of things to be taken on. And then, once he does graduate, he then becomes a working computer professional in Manhattan, and then also managed to attend the 1976 Summer Olympics in Montreal, where he was an alternate in the heavyweight wrestling team. Unfortunately, he never got to wrestle in the Olympics as the people that they had, no one got injured or anything, so he didn't get much of a chance. So he then starts his preparations for the 1980 Olympics in Moscow, but that all gets cut short when the United States boycott the Olympics altogether. But he does manage to win the bronze medal in the International Wrestling World Championships in Tehran in 1978. So he's an accomplished amateur wrestler. He's on the stage. And he's at MIT. You know, this is this this is a character that should have been in the Big Bang Theory. I think you would have added something to Leonard and Howard and the other guys, <laughs> whose names I forget. So anyway, Erland one day is working out at the New York Athletic Club, where he's spotted by a casting director who desperately wants him for the role of Terror the leader of the Ford and Boldies, and what would later become the 1979 classic, The Wanderers, directed by Philip Kaufman. Hey, hey my favorite wanderer, man. 
<laughs> you know, Joey, if I had a dog with a face like yours, I'd shave its ass and teach it to walk backwards. <laughs> Paul, what are your memories of The Wanderers? It's just one of those iconic gang films, isn't it? Uh, definitely. And what, and what a great soundtrack as well. Damien, any memories of The Wanderers? Um, well, you, same as what Paul said, really. It's a great film. I'm surprised. So that was his first kind of proper foray into into movie yeah. acting. Into movie acting. Yeah, he'd done a bit on stage, but not in... So he's, he's, he's gone from sort of stage musicals to playing a... a well, terror, <laughs> and in name, in name, in name, and in stature, in in the Wanderers, you know, the the the, the major sort of villain, if you will, of the film that every well, the man everyone's afraid of. So yeah, so it's not not a bad start, really, an iconic role in an iconic film. Um, another iconic actor in that film was uh, one of our heroes of cults himself, Tony Ganios who played Perry in The Wanderers and would go on to play Meat and Porkies. Um, we approached him about this episode and he had this to say about working with Erland in The Wanderers. Yeah, so I've got, a, I've got a quote directly from Tony himself. So Tony had this to say. A truly unique individual, Erland was a gentleman and a scholar whose physical appearance belied his true nature. Opera singer, Olympic wrestler and MIT graduate. His actual profession was designing computer systems for banks. He was gifted with a wry sense of humour that made working with him like being around a 400 pound Kelsey grammar. Those are the words of Tony Ganyos himself. A fascination, is it? I mean, that's a man who worked with him in The Wanderers and well, between them, they were the, the, the top two heavyweights of the movie, really. We were all waiting for that big fight that between them that didn't quite happen, but there was a nice big conclusion to that movie. If you've not seen it, it's normally on about midnight somewhere on one <laughs> of the channels. But also, you know, track it down. It is a cult classic. I'm sure it's available on Amazon. And it, yeah, it'll be available. So Erland makes the Wanderers. It comes out. It's a cult hit everywhere. The acting world is falling over him, but he decides to continue his career in information technology, as well as teaching English at the Manhattan Community College, as well as developing a singing career with the Amoto Opera in New York, where he studied to become a Halden baritone. And then he even managed to set up his own IT company at the same time whilst doing that. So he's done his acting. That, the Wanderers was around 1979. By 1980, he's singing. He's got his own IT company. He's in the opera. He's teaching English. He's kind of moved away from it a bit. But Hollywood would come knocking once again. What's the story with him? Why does he get a separate table? That's Grossberger. The biggest mass murder in the history of the Southwest. My dear. He killed his entire family and all his relatives in one weekend. And then he killed some more people that reminded him of his family. Is he here for rehabilitation? He threw the chaplain through a wall over at the library, burned the furniture factory to the ground. He... In 1980, Erlen portrayed the role of Grossberger in Stir Crazy, alongside Richard Pryor and Gene Wilder. His actual voice wasn't used for the song Down in the Valley in the film due to the SAG after strike in 1980. He wasn't able to record the song himself, so they used the pre-recorded track to which he had sung the song during the filming in the final print of the movie. Yeah, I think, I mean, he plays Grossman in this, and I think that the quote that we've just read out actually pretty well sums up the character he plays in this. It's a kind of you know, a huge beast of a man that they're petrified of when they find out they got to share a, a, a cell with him. And, the, you know, the, the, the scene where they first go in there and he's literally just got, uh, I think, this is going by memory, but I'm pretty sad, and he's got Richard Pryor sort of pinned up against the wall and he's just staring down at him when they're yeah, in, in the yeah. prison cell. I'm sure it's that way round and not the other way round. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen the film. But it's a, it's a great performance. And like I say, um, the, you know, that quote that we've just, just, that I've just read out kind of sums up the Grossman character, to be fair. He's a huge guy, but uh, actually 
is a general giant. And it's, it's only something that's been like Pashti so many times as well. Yeah, uh, but then you know this is 1980, so yeah, no, uh, no, I mean since. So, yeah. so when you're looking at the likes of Vinnie Jones, and uh, who's that silent gruff type that comes out with the intelligent quotes? Is that is that big, evil-looking or, or, or rough and ready-looking giant that actually has that softer side? Yeah, so Stir Crazy, another massive hit, which he plays a big part of. Again, will be available. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, will be. It's available. On, uh, it's got to be on some of the platforms wherever you it's are. Go look Amazon. for it if you've not seen. Oh, it's definitely on Amazon in the UK. Go find it if you haven't seen it. It is an all-time classic. Immensely. Probably. Dare I say it? Although Silver Streak was pretty close, it probably was the best prior Wilder team-up. I think team it's up. the best prior and, and Wilder team-up, without a doubt. Most yeah. definitely. Let's, let's say that it's... There is so many quotable lines from that film and i've i can think back to many drunken moments where i've been me and my brother have been uh pissing ourselves laughing just going oh she oh she so <laughs> if you haven't seen the film you've got no idea what i'm not what we're talking about but watch it and you will it's uh, and again it, it, it's one of those ones that they play off each other so well and it's not just the comedy as well it's those deeper moments as well yeah and it, yeah quality acting yep and the supporting cast are good including uh, Linda yeah. we're, we're, we're talking about so we had stir crazy in 1980 but then again you know he takes a little bit of time off again because you know he's a busy man he's got a lot going on he's, the singing is still uh, going strong the MIT stuff is still going strong and his own computer company is still going strong so we don't actually see him on the big screen again until 1982 when he appears in alone in the dark playing the role of ronald fatty elster and alone in dark also features uh dwight schultz who you know is hm murdoch from the a-team and it's also got uh jack palance donald presence and martin landau in it amongst others but they are they're a quartet of murderous psychopaths who break out of a mental hospital during a power blackout and lay siege to their doctor's house. It's probably and the interesting thing there as well is, you know, this isn't him in some little film with, with bit part actors again, you know, like Stir Crazy with huge actors that he's just part of that ensemble. He just blends into it seamlessly. And again, just showed the range that the guy had um i think tom savini even did some of the makeup for it so it was more probably a more violent more scary film compared to some of the others he's done more, more of the the slasher genre which was sort of a big thing at that time really i suppose everything was going slasher wasn't it freddy we'd had freddy by then jason was running around no freddy actually freddy was later i stand corrected this is 1982 still yeah i don't think my freddy apologies jay i think jason was running around there michael myers definitely was oh yeah so we're, we're getting that we're heading that way so in a way maybe he was a bit of a a pioneer <laughs> maybe but again alone in the dark is a forgotten uh film but is available uh on it is available online in various places so do have a look round. I'm not sure if it's on Amazon or whatever, but I've definitely seen it on YouTube and things like that, which whilst not technically legal, we're not hosting it. So we're not doing anything illegal, but do have a look round. It would be another five years before we saw Ireland on the big screen again, though, this time as the role in the role of Dynamo in the 1987 Schwarzenegger smash hit The Running Man where Dynamo was a, what was the word they used for it, Paul? They were... Stalk stalkers. Stalkers, who were basically, thank you, Paul, who were basically sort of like, the, imagine like gladiators or something, you know, the people that chased up, they were like the the named uh, villains of the TV series who would chase after the, the different running men and try and catch them. And um, this was a good chance for him to show off his singing skills where he would enter... His, his battle singing Mozart's Marriage of Figaro.
So, Paul, I know the the Running Man is one of your favourites, and you're still waiting for that film to turn into a real life TV show. What 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 are your memories of it? Yeah, so he he summed up a, a stalker in to perfection. He was the larger in life um, hunter for psycho. Yeah, that that was due to track down all uh, all the running men. Um, and you know Arnold Schwarzenegger wasn't wasn't a small contestant. Let's face it. So so again, it really showed the real gladiators that that were battling him. Not not just uh, Dynamite, but even the other um, stalkers in it. Uh, but the Dynamite was over the top, eccentric craziness, all bundled to, up in the in Ireland's you know unique way of, of you know, mastery when it comes to playing something that's so far removed from his actual true life character. Um, yes, yeah, the opera singing. Um, great car uh, and electrics is coming off everywhere, um, and he gets a great death scene as well, which, which, yeah, um, uh, I think just sums up everything that you need to be it from 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 those crazy stalkers uh, that that's required. Uh, but he played played it perfectly. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's interesting that it's a complete departure from the the the, the last. Well, the last film they really talked about, which is uh, Crazy, where he's the gentle giant. This is the, the complete opposite. Yeah. And yeah, out like nutter. He got to let loose a bit. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, Running Man was unfortunately the last film that we would see Ireland in as a few months after f- finishing the filming of it on the 23rd of September 1987. Ireland passed away at the age of 34 years old due to heart failure. Such a young age, but managed to pack so much into those 34 years. And for someone who Can't only make made... It a bit of shame, doesn't it? Definitely, <laughs> yeah. Definitely, I've not done anything. Has he got a degree from MIT? You're a renowned stage musical actor. You've been in some of the best cult films of all time. Um, whilst running your own computer company and being an English teacher. I've done one of those. <laughs> <laughs> I am an English teacher. And you've got his hairline. Well, that's true. I could, if they remade The Wanderers now, I probably could fit into the Baldies gang. <laughs> but yeah, for someone on to, you know, made four films, really, and made such a big impact in those films that you know, a lot of people still wonder... Um, you know what happened to that guy where is he now whatever and that's kind of the reason we want to do this special episode on his birthday just to celebrate the the short but impactful career of Erland van Leef de Jude if I've said that right if I've been saying that wrong the whole episode I apologize to his whole family So that was the Cult Faction podcast special bonus episode, remembering Erlen Van Luter Jude. We'd like to thank Tony Ganios for his contribution to this episode. Um, it's very welcome and we appreciate that. Um, please check out our other podcasts on that drop weekly and are on check out cultfaction.com for more information. Ah, <laughs> uh, Superman. Is it Jude? Is it cute? I'm going to play Ireland now. <laughs>